All right, guys, let's spend a few minutes and just talk about the Hellraiser lineup. Um, it's kind of a collection, a Hellraiser family collection video, as well as just kind of a Dirk discussion. This particular one you're looking at is a one of one. Um, I don't even know if you could call it a production version or is it more of a custom production? It's a one of one, okay? It is their production lineup and it does have hand done custom touches by Ed. That's what makes it the one of one. And this does not belong to me, okay? This is a friend of mine's, Anthony, who tried to get me to buy it first, but I just didn't. And it's covered in oil and stuff still because I've just I've not really cleaned it up. I'm, I wasn't really planning to do a full video on it because it's basically the same as the other productions with some nuances and differences, which make it the one of one, okay? Um, my Carta. They have not done micarta scales before. It's either been carbon fiber in a couple of different configurations of carbon fiber. They have this basket weave type one, and they had a marbled carbon fiber with some blue in it. I think that was a DLT exclusive, if I'm not mistaken. I had one of those for a while. I recently just included that as part of a trade deal, actually, because I'm still trying knock on wood, not to buy knives in 2024. Trades are okay. <laughs> That's allowed. <laughs> the things that we justify in our mind is funny, right? So the other thing that's different here is titanium pivot collars and no holes in the blade. This is also a double thumb stud, which is not completely unique. Generally, there is just a single thumb stud. However, I have had several over the years that have had double thumb stud, which reminds me, I'm going to look in a drawer real quick because there might be one more Hellraiser that I have. Uh, no, that's just a box. Okay. I was, I was thinking there was one more that I had, not out here on the table that you can't see yet, but... So the main differences in this is, one, it actually has a really light detent. I wish the detent was a little stronger. So this one I can slow roll out. This one, <laughs> uh, you know, once in a while I can slow roll it, but it's really tough. This one fires like it's nobody's business. So I, I wish the detent was a little stronger on this, but other than that, it's great. So it has a light detent. It has no holes in the blade, which is common. They did on the automatics. It has no holes in the blade. And then my buddy Mike Luck Knives reminded me that on the brass version, because they made a brass scaled version for a limited time, that had no holes in the blades either. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is the only one they're doing in my Carta. It was a the experiment that Ed did, uh, I guess he didn't really like the way it came out. I, I think it's fine. Um, I would have liked, preferred maybe to have no holes in the pocket clip, like the automatic has no holes in the pocket clip. But again, it's a one of one. Anthony tried to get me to buy it, but I just, I didn't. So I'm honored that he bought it and was able to send it to me. This is the one that started it all for me was the production standard Hellraiser. And I've talked about it many, many times, but if you're new to the channel or you haven't seen the other Hellraiser videos, Jim Skelton did a video on this guy and I paused the video. I went to the Red Horse Knife Works website. I ordered one and I went back to watch the video in hopes that Jim didn't at the end say it was a piece of junk, don't buy it. Because I didn't even watch the whole video. So it kind of started with this one for me, and it's become an obsession. I have a little bit of a Hellraiser problem. And the rest of these are in no particular order. But when they came out with the automatic, I had to get an automatic because I've talked to Ed a lot now. I 
not sure I'd call us friends friends, but we have become pretty close. We chat regularly. He's been on the EDC Hour, um, my live stream with Alex. So yeah, we chat back and forth. He's donated a couple of Hellraisers for giveaways in the past. Um, I own a prototype war pig, a production war pig. I own the very first knife that Ed ever made and sold right out of apprenticeship. So yeah, I'm a big fan of Ed in general and the Hellraiser line. Then I got into the custom versions. This is used to be Jim Skelton's. This is one of this is the original Black Death series knife that Ed sent to Jim to do video on when it first came out. I didn't have a channel back then, or maybe he would have sent it to me. Who knows? I know, I know. Not even trying to compare myself with Jim. Jim and I are friends. I would call him a friend. Way bigger channel, way bigger presence. He has spent a lot of my money. I'm not sure I have spent much of anybody else's money. So I get it. Um, but this was the original Black Death series knife. He made 10 in the Black Death series, which had this um, pearl carbon fiber, zirconium bolsters. I own currently three of the original Black Death series knives, one being this Dama Steel Flipper which is crazy awesome with a crazy zirconium pocket clip. Um, there is one more. I, I owned four at one point. One got sold to a friend in Alaska, but that, however, is at some point, probably in 2024, going to come back to me. So I will have four of the original 10 Black Death series knives. Yeah, and I'm actually talking with and have chatted back and forth with the gentleman that owns the very first original Hellraiser ever made. And he loves it and isn't willing to sell it. But maybe one day I will get lucky. Who knows? Okay. At some point I ended up with this production they did a very few with the Damasteel blades. And there's just something different about this. This one, the carbon fiber looks a little bit different. And it feels way smoother, way more velvety, if you will. And the Damasteel blade, the action on this thing is just fantastic. This one is really a high point in the collection. Not over the custom Black Death series ones, just kind of equal because this is rare and special, okay? And then a very good friend of mine, Kevin, owned this one and reached out to me maybe a year-ish ago and asked if I would want to buy this one from him. Um, I couldn't quickly enough say, what's your PayPal? <laughs> At the time, I was like, I don't even need to know the price. You just basically tell me what your PayPal is. I'll send you a bunch of money. You can ship it to me. Um, I got a good deal. Her um, bacon pattern Damascus, carbon fiber, titanium hardware, titanium pocket clip with the hidden hardware, which I love. I love the fact that it's got hidden hardware. Um, Ed and I are working on and talking about, he is discontinuing the custom Hellraiser line here shortly. And I am in line to get the very last custom that he makes of the Hellraiser line. Since I have kind of the very first real one that went out for mass, you know, whatever. I mean, yes, there's a guy that has the very, very first one. But since I have basically the first one that people are aware of, he thought it was fitting for me to have the last one made. So we're going to come up with something very cool for the last one for sure. We've been talking about ideas for a couple of years. I think he is working on the second to last right now, and then it will be my turn. He also did some fixed blades. This is the mini Hellraiser fixed blade that I had to have because, again... I like to support Ed. I like to support the people that I know, 
the people I think are good and, you know, good people, if you will, right? Ed's just a good guy. Um, previous former Forge and Fire competitor, martial artist, like a lot of good things in his life. So I, I like to support those types of people. And it just fits with my collection. I love the Hellraiser model, so I had to have a fixed blade version. I, The thing I hear most about the Hellraisers are people just think they're ugly. People don't understand the, the style and whatnot. But I tell you, every single person I have sent this one to, this one gets sent around a lot. Because worst case, I could just buy another one. They're like 200 and something dollars. Um, so I loan this one out to a lot of people. And once they get one in hand, a lot of people just want to go buy one because they realize that it is, while it's a little odd looking, it is very ergonomic. The blade is down below your knuckles. So you can really get in, do some work. You can do piercing with this and then cutting. Like this is a very useful style knife and blade shape. Plus, it just gets a lot of comments when you're out at a knife show or in a group of friends when they want to pocket check you and see what are you carrying. This gets a lot of talk. So I like that aspect as well. Ed's a great guy. And yeah, I'm a big Hellraiser fan. So there you go. Just a quick collection video. This one is going to ship out to Anthony shortly because I have another one of his here and one more coming in the mail, maybe today, maybe Tuesday after the Memorial Day weekend. I'm filming this on Saturday of the Memorial Day weekend. You're seeing it whenever you're seeing it. But I do have one more knife that Anthony bought that's coming in to film and then I will ship this plus a couple of other things to him. And there you go. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below if you've made it this far in the video. Comment bacon down below. Let me know you made it to the end.